I think the D20 or icosahedron is a pretty cool shape. It's complicated enough to be interesting, and it has a certain cultural significance due to its association with tabletop games. You know, D&D. Several months ago, I tried to make a D20 out of flat stock cut into triangles uh, with only limited success. I tried on very small uh, D20s, maybe an inch or two in diameter, and I just found it difficult to manipulate the materials, especially once the D20 became more than hemispherical. Once it's more than half of a sphere, it's really hard to assemble without the pieces falling in and all that kind of stuff. I finally succeeded at making an aluminum D20. Your first step when welding a D20 is to cut out a bunch of triangles. So I started by marking the triangles on this hardware store aluminum with this angle gauge thingy. After that, it was off to the bandsaw. I just cut these by hand. Okay, I didn't have any shots of the welding. I'm sorry. First of all, you wouldn't want to see it. It was gory. I'm not great at welding aluminum, and I didn't clean the aluminum very well, so there was lots of spattering and garbage bubbling up out of the aluminum. It wasn't very pretty. As Jody would say, it looks like Fido's butt. I don't know what I've got so far. So I started by taking uh, triangles that are two inches on each side, just from a two inch uh, strip, you know, flat stock of aluminum, and cutting them at 60 degree angles, and then taking the taking every two of them and welding them uh, in the middle, in between. Some are just autogenous, you know, I just let them, just to stick them together. Uh, I found that it was much easier to weld the inside than it was to weld the outside, which I thought was really weird. Anyway, so a couple of these, these are just extras. Uh, and then here's the ball that I have so far. It's still almost boiling because I just took it out of, the, out of some water. But uh, the welds are ugly because everything is dirty. You know, I didn't, I didn't prep this aluminum as well as I should have. It's got oil all over it, so yeah, whatever. Anyway, it's coming out pretty well. Then we grind off these welds and see if we can't make it look nice. And then we'll give it a second, uh, second weld to close any big holes that we find or anything like that. But so far, so good. Okay, all the initial sanding is done. All the... Um, all the joints are are sanded off. You can still some of them still have uh, little interfaces. You can see where you can you can see the weld metal versus the base metal. Uh, most of them don't though, and there are some blemishes now. So I just ground them to square, so they're just edges right now. Most of them, and the the ends here are points, sharp points, and I don't intend to leave it like that. So I'm gonna put it back uh, back to the welder, fill in little blemishes like that. You know um, the points. Some of the points are still crap. Craptastic, so uh, those will be filled in and resanded. But yeah, uh, we're in touch-ups now. Okay, well this came out better than I expected. Um, all the edges leveled out nicely. Um, I've got all the points sanded down. Most of the holes filled. There are a few little pockets. Let's see if I can find them. A few little. Uh, burn spots that I could refill with the TIG, but I'm not going to because there's one right there. There's a little tiny crater right there. I don't care, so I'm going to let that one go. Anyway, uh, round it off nicely. It feels like a big giant aluminum D20. Okay, now it's time for lettering. So I've taken a little wire brush similar to this one uh, in an air tool and given this swatch here a wire, wire brush to finish. And then I've used the vinyl cutter to stick a number eight on here as a test number. Anyway, and then I'm going to put this in the sandblaster, because that's my the final finish for the whole piece is going to be sandblasted. So I'm going to see if this vinyl, first of all, is strong enough to withstand the sandblaster for use as a mask. It's permanent vinyl, and it's stuck on there pretty good on clean aluminum, but we'll see. Uh, if not, then maybe we'll move to something chemical, uh, like uh, acid etching. Okay, here it is straight out of the blasting cabinet. So uh, the vinyl held up pretty well. It's showing a little bit of wear, but I only needed to blast it for a second or two. This is mostly um, alumina blasting media with a little bit of old um, black diamond coal slag mixed in. That looks pretty neat. That looks pretty darn cool. I like that. So that's the brushed finish underneath and the blasted finish on top. That looks great. So it's pretty uh it's pretty hard to see the details on the camera here but i've got the thing all sandblasted and it's looking really good because it's pretty uniform you know it's nice nice looking yeah it looks really good so now i'm going to take a wire brush like so and i'm going to wire brush each of these surfaces and then we're going to put the vinyl decals over and re-sandblast to get rid of extra brush marks and then we should be left with nice uh nice numbering
Applying the decals is pretty typical. First we weed off the background, then we stick it onto some uh, contact paper for transfer. Transfer it on, rub it nicely, and remove the contact paper. Just repeat that 19 more times. Okay, got all the vinyl decals stuck on here. Now I'm going to go try to sandblast around the vinyl decals and hopefully not blow them all off. We'll see if we can get a nice contrast. This is just out of the sandblaster. I'm really surprised that all the numbers stuck on. The vinyl did a really great job. It's still all filthy. So I'm going to scrub it and uh, be right back. Okay, here's the plan for painting. I got two of these paint stirring sticks, screws sticking at the edges, clamped onto the workbench. Okay, the holder thing seems to be working okay. It's very tenuous, like it's just barely held on there, it'll like roll around. I'm worried that the paint spray might actually roll it around. I love it. It's beautiful. Thanks for watching. Now go make one of your own.